In my opinion, the top three qualities that a leader should have is number one, be able to articulate a very clear vision. Number two is really what I call leading by example. I think a leader should be at the forefront of what the team is trying to achieve. And number three is this idea of being collaborative and involving. Creating a platform that allows everybody to express their views and to share their ideas will make the team a lot stronger. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is Manchester United's new CEO, Omar Barada, speaking at City, where he was their chief of football operations for the whole of the City football group. Now, who is he? What did he do at City? Was he involved in the 115 charges? There's so many questions that I know you have. And what I'm going to try and do in this video is give you as much information as possible. We're going to have a far deeper dive into his career, his time at Barcelona, what he did at City, being involved in the Haaland transfer. But this should tell you the top line stuff about Omar Barada, who is Manchester United's new CEO. Now, the timeline of what happened here was fantastic because this is one of those perfect situations, in my opinion, where nobody linked Barada to the job. And out of nowhere... David Ornstein came with the bomber, saying that he is going to become our new CEO. Soon after, Fabrizio Romano confirmed that he, look, he's already signed his contract. He's already resigned. Basically, as soon as United came knocking, he was like, yep, yep, all right, I'm good, I'm there. Now, this is what the Times are reporting on him as well. They're saying that, as I said, he was a chief football operations officer at City Football Group. He was set to be confirmed in the next few days. He's already been confirmed. I'll run through that statement in a little bit. He's understood to be on gardening leave from City after resigning. And that's something that's reiterated by the BBC as well, uh, saying that he's probably not going to be starting until the summer. So it's unlikely that we see Barada working at Manchester United until the summer. However, the statement is already out. Can I just take a second here to... We've gone from... Nobody linking Barada to Manchester United as the CEO position to David Ornstein saying it to a statement coming out immediately. That's changing itself. This is what the statement says. And by the way, the wording I think is important here. Manchester United is pleased to announce the appointment of Omar Barada as its new CEO. The club is determined to put football and performance on the pitch back at the heart of everything we do. Omar's appointment represents the first steps on this journey. Honestly, that is just like, that's Ineos Two fingers to the Glazers, flipping the bird straight at Avram's face. The club is determined to put football and performance on the pitch back at the heart of everything we do in an official statement about us bringing a new CEO in. I mean, it's completely correct, but it's completely the opposite of how the Glazers have run our club. It is sta our stated ambition to re-establish Manchester United as a title-winning club. We are pleased that Omar will be joining us to help achieve that goal so that once again, United fans can see in the words of Sir Matt Busby, the red flag flying high at the summit of English, European and world football. Omar's start date will be confirmed in due course. Patrick Stewart will continue as CEO, interim CEO. As I said, that, that statement in itself, Ratcliffe is not just about words. This is real action. Now, Sam Lee, who works for The Athletic, as has been reported everywhere, this is not just this is not just Manchester United sweeping up somebody who, I don't know, they're unemployed. Let's go and get them. We hear about best in class a lot. Omar Barada was basically being lined up as the new director of football at Man City whenever, can never say his name, Bagiristan? Whenever he left Man City, he was the first in line for that role. And Man United have gone to him and said, do you want to become our CEO? He said, yes. He handed in his resignation. United have not just signed somebody because he's easy and available. They've gone for probably a very difficult person to get and got him decisively. Now, what did Barada do at Man City? What can we learn? Let's run through this. As I said, he was the chief football operations officer at the City Football Group. Now, what he did there in his current form was oversee all the clubs under the City Football Group. And I didn't quite realise how many that is, by the way. Man City, New York, Melbourne, Yokohama, Montevideo, Girona, Sichuan, Mumbai, Lomel, Estac, not going to try and pronounce that, uh, Palermo, Bahia, 13 different clubs underneath the City Football Group all under the overall 
operational stewardship of Omar Barada. This guy knows what he is doing. And if you look a little bit further back at his career history, he spent seven years at Barcelona between 2004 and 11 working on the business side of things. Obviously, that was the dominant period for, let's not even speak about what Barcelona did to United at that point in time. Seven years he worked for Barcelona on the business side of things, went to Manchester City and worked his way through. Head of international business development, up to director of partnership sales, up to senior vice president and the group commercial director, and then into the chief operating officer, as I said, of the City Football Group, of the football operations. This guy really is like a best-in-class appointment. Not somebody who has sort of had his best years behind him and not somebody who's just unemployed and easy to go for. Ineos have made a real statement with that signing. Honestly, that could be one of the most important signings that this club makes under Jim Ratcliffe. Because we, we have a man, as you heard at the start of the video, there's somebody who understands a vision, somebody who understands delegation, somebody who understands what it is to be a leader. And he has been a leader at City. Now, the questions around whether or not he's going to be involved in the 115 charges, right? This is what the Times are reporting. They're saying it is understood that Barada did not play any role in the sponsorship and salary deals that have led to City being charged with 115 alleged rule breaches by the Premier League. This is obviously something that we can't know for a fact. But I would imagine that Ratcliffe and Ineos have done their homework and their research to the point where they feel confident enough to bring him in, to get that statement done, and to have Omar Barada confirmed as the new CEO of Manchester United. And you know what? That Being able to say that kind of puts a smile on my face. We've gone from Richard Arnold to one of the key men of that dominant city football operation. Look, it, this isn't like, you, you can't pretend that City's success has just come because of the oil money. We have wasted a billion pounds, more than a billion pounds on transfers as a football club. If we had had someone like Omar Barada in as a CEO 10 years ago, so many of the mistakes that we made would never have been made. Football brains are equally as important as football money. Get both working in unison together. And you can do what City did. And you can add a little bit of, you know, extra 115 things on top of it as well. Just to make sure. Extra seasoning. This is a really exciting appointment. And one that I think you should be excited for as well. And as I said, it's a massive statement from Ratcliffe and Ineos. Because Barada was, as I said, nobody was linking him to us. They kept that all behind closed doors and it was clinical. It was quick. He's already been confirmed. The statement is already out. No speculation, no anything. When's the statement coming out? Boom. Decisive action. And the fact that they got Barada because they wanted him and they made it happen straight away, it kind of fills me with hope about the sporting director appointment, the head of recruitment appointment. If they want Dan Ashworth, as they've shown right there with Omar Barada, they can go and get him. And that's what United should be able to do. We should be able to get the best in class. We should be able to bring the best in English football into our club. Bolster that with everything that we've got coming through the youth ranks. And that's how we built some of our most successful teams. Arguably, pretty much all of our successful teams. This has been such a positive start in these first two weeks. And there's so many people that just want to believe uh, that, ah, oh, it's nothing but PR this, PR that, spin this, spin that. You do you. You operate how you want to operate as a United fan, but I can see what Ratcliffe is trying to do. And not only is he trying to do it, he's done it immediately before he's got the keys to Manchester United. Omar Barada has been confirmed as our new CEO. I'm going to be doing a deeper dive looking into his career at Barcelona and looking into examples, what other people have said about him. You're going to enjoy that one. And I enjoyed doing this video as well. This is the, the start of real, genuine change. And the beginnings 
of a first truly modern football structure at Manchester United. The thing that has held us back ever since Fergie and, and David Gill left. It's real, real reasons to be optimistic.